sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. That crust on you. Sway four five, Heather B. I'm really excited. As you yeah, should yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My brothers came up in here, man. Yeah, don't help him with the headphones. Get it right. Yeah. This? Oh, yeah. 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 All right. Yeah, man. I, man. Well, I don't even know how to start. I'm usually, I'm, I'm, my flow is usually <laughs> impeccable in these situations. But right now, I'm kind of at a loss of words, man. That, nah, uh, man, just tell the truth. Man, I, I, I tell you, man, there's a few guys when me and Tech first started on the radio mm -hmm. that um, we really, truly, truly admired. Uh, truly admired. And, and actually, man, I, if, I, if I may go this far, I really modeled ourselves off the energy we received from their work. Uh, from their music, you know, back in 1990 and even even before. But I, I remember the Funky Technician uh, project came mm. out um, with Lord Finesse, and and on it, you know, was in, we were introduced to a lot of different artists uh, from that project and, and a whole collective of just a movement that was taking place in the Bronx. You know, we were just trying to learn everybody's name and figure out who was who and which voice fit which face. You didn't have social <laughs> media back then. You right. didn't know yeah. who did what, yeah. you know, and it was names like Big L, um, names like Fat Joe, KRS-One, Big Pun, all these different legendary people that came along with this movement, a group called Showbiz and AG, mm. you know, and a producer in that group by the name of Showbiz. The man's name was Showbiz. Yes, sir. How fly was that name? Fly. Mm -hmm. Showbiz. Fly. It just felt like movement. And then it was different back then because you didn't have the internet. You know, you could just kind of dig up, oh, let me look mm -hmm. at Showbiz. And mm -hmm. who is Showbiz? Okay, so he's, you know, Wikipedia tell you half-ass <laughs> information about who somebody is. So you really had to dig and learn. And once we learned who the man was and what the movement DITC was, the acronym Digging in the Crates, um, when we started the Wake Up Show, there were certain people, large professor, that we really respected. Mm -hmm. um, Nas, we really respected. Mm -hmm. um, the Fugees, we really res respected. Um, down South, of course, NWA and Dr. Dre and all those guys. Far Side, you know, that movement that was taking place, we really respected. But Digging in the Crates crew probably got the most burned in the first few years of our show, which helped and mold, you know, our mentality and then it helped mold the mentality of the audience of what is dope, you know, what is quality, mm -hmm. you know, what is passion, dedication, what is everything that this culture is made of was um really fitting this one crew digging in the crates. And man, this dude doesn't get up to do this, but I I'm honored to have him here <laughs> this morning. The one and only showbiz. <laughs> Yeah. And then Black Sheep, you know, Drez and those guys, uh, Mr. Long, these guys were, we always loved Black Sheep's production. Yeah. Like, they had the illest, I don't know who was mixing their records back then, but them <laughs> of, they always had the illest, yeah. illest, um, illest production. And anytime somebody was dope, whoever they introduced you to, you just automatically thought they're dope too. Otherwise, why yeah. would they be with them? And I remember the Wee Boys track and featured a group called The Legion that was on there. And um, and from that point on, we always thought, man, these dudes are dope. They must be dope. Look who they're down with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, I'm a fast forward. One of the members is here with us today. And he teamed up with Showbiz. And they got a new project that they came here to talk about, a Bronx tale. Welcome, Molecules, ladies and gentlemen. Cues, what up, baby? Oh, man, what's up, Sway? Come on, man. Cues What's up, looking, Sway? Man, you look exactly like you did in the 90s. <laughs> I don't know what kind of, you've been mummified oh, or something, man. man. What you do, man? What you doing? Oh, man, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to take care of myself, man. Drink a little water more than more than I used to. Yeah. Drinking some water, man, and trying to stay out of, stay out of, you know. Stay out of harm's way, huh? Yeah, man, you know. Man, I, look, I'm about to fan out, man, so let's just start talking, man. Let's do it. All right, cool. Um. Digging in the Crates. Okay, the DITC Collective. Mm -hmm. First day it came to fruition. Where did it all begin, Show? What year? What year? Uh, 
Well, you know, when, when we dropped Finesse in 90, yeah. there wasn't no dig. We didn't have the name yet. Okay. So, you know, uh, Diamond and I were planning on producing other artists because that's the number on Finesse album. Diamond D. Diamond D. Okay, you got to do yes. that now. Oh, yeah. you know, you <laughs> Diamond, yeah, yeah, yeah. Diamond okay. D is okay. a co-founder of Digging in the Crates with, with okay. myself. And uh, on Funky's Technician, first album, that was the first time that I had produced an artist, mm -hmm. Diamond and DJ Premier. That was our first artist that we all produced together. Wow. So we'll stop and for a second. Album. Stop yeah. for a second. Diamond D, Showbiz, and DJ Premier. First yeah. time. Go. Yeah. Crazy. So that was the first album we all came, you know, together and, and did for Law Finesse. And then after that, uh after that one, and then Diamond and I wanted to start a production company and then uh that's how digging in the crates formed. But we didn't even it was just us producing other other artists mm -hmm. and then on uh i pressed up my own you know the soul clap ep mm -hmm. whatever in 91 and we put the song digging in the crates on there and then that's how everybody came and you know anybody that got down with us we just said the crew called digging in the crates you know because uh right after law finesse and then it was it was ag me AG. and ag Runaway then, Slave? No, well, no the, 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 EP, the, the EP, Party Groove, and okay. yeah, mm -hmm. remember the Soul Clapping Party Groove, that's before we got signed to uh, Polygram, and uh, once we did that, and we just ran with the name Digging in the Crates, or for that first EP, name? I did, because that's what we used to do. Digging the yeah. Crates, can you explain what that means yeah. to those who don't well, know? Well, you know, when, when we used to be in the park jams, and I'm taking it back to the early 80s, do we used it. to be in the park jams. You come outside, all of the records used to be in crates, mm -hmm. you know, and then when we started sampling, we used to just go into the crates and find the rarest samples and stuff like that, mm -hmm. you know, and anytime we would go record shopping, we usually have to pick up the records in crates, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what, that's what it's called, like digging in the crates is mainly just looking for rare samples, just looking for old records, you know. Going to antique shops and Salvation Armies and all those places and going to the record section and saying, where's the old records at? And they usually be in crates. Digging in you know? the crates. I love yeah. it. Because yeah. crates ain't even the same way they used to be. Like, it, it used to be old milk crates. No, in yeah. the hood, it was old milk crates. And you yeah. knew that it was official depending on how worn out the letters was on the side of the milk crate. You know, <laughs> that's how you knew how official it was. Now, yeah. you could go to Walmart and buy, like, right. an orange crate. That ain't a real crate. A real you crate. need the black crate with the white letters smudged out. It's that's like a real dairy milk Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, but it's like airy ilk because it's all smudged out. Yeah, so, yeah. so, so, okay. <laughs> So how did the like where did Big L come from? Who, how did well, y'all connect with Big L? Big L uh, came, you know, finesse was down at Rock and Well, which was a place where you used to uh, go buy mixtapes uh, in Harlem. And uh, finesse was there one day, and someone told Big L that finesse was there. So he he approached finesse and was like, "Yo, dogs, I'm nice." I'm nice. He says, let me rhyme for you one time. You don't like it, X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. And he rhymed for Finesse. And Finesse called me. He was like, yo, this guy's crazy. So uh, after Finesse met him and Finesse brought him to me, and we took him to Jazzy J studio, and we started doing demos from there. Then Finesse started taking him on to the road and doing things. And then I went and got him a deal on in Sony, mm -hmm. Columbia. And then that was that. But it, it came from Finesse meeting him down in Harlem while he was at Rock and Will. And Finesse approached, I mean, Big Al approached him. How did you and Finesse meet? Oh, man, we grew up together. Yeah? We was in the same school, same everything. We was in the same hood. Mm -hmm. Finesse, Fat Joe, and Diamond, all of us from the same block. Same block. Yeah, yeah. We all knew each other since we was kids. What was Joe like as a kid? Same way he is now. Really? <laughs> Just Boy. boisterous, proud, confident. Yeah, always, 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 and he was—he always wanted to be a star. Joe is exactly where he knew he would be. Mm -hmm. He always wanted to be a star, always, and he always—he's really smart. He's one of the smartest dudes I ever met, though. Like, cause he pay attention to everything, and mm -hmm. he figure out how he can make it work for him. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? He's exactly where he, where he wanted to be. Okay. But he's always like that. He always was who he is now. Who was a good student? What like finesse. at school? At school, finesse. Finesse was the student. Uh, finesse. He's he good. Not only in he's good in everything. He's mm -hmm. he was really really smart. He was always like an artist as far as he knew how to draw. 
he know how to do a lot of things. Anything finesse do, he do it very well. Yeah. He's like a perfectionist in everything he does. You know what I'm saying? So, but he was definitely the A student. He he was definitely good. Listen, showbiz yeah. is here, man. One of the things about finesse to me, even as an MC, that always stood out was the clarity in his voice. Like mm -hmm. he was just yeah. so clear. It was almost like a breath of fresh air. Did y'all highlight that on purpose, or was that was one of the things that just made him so special? Because you heard every word and every punchline. Yeah, well, that's just that's just how he rhymes. That's how he talk. Mm -hmm. He talk like that in real life. I never heard yeah. him no, say no, like, like words he raps, like yeah. in a yeah, conversation. Yeah, yeah. Every he, time he I see him, exactly he rhymes. He talks exactly like that. He sounds exactly <laughs> like that. For real. You know, bridging everything that you guys are saying with like, I'm starting to think about like now, maybe 10 years from now, how people's stories about music mm -hmm. in 2017 will be. Mm -hmm. And it's making me realize how big the um, ad lib is. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes people just depend more on the ad lib to be like their punchline than any of the actual like verses. Mm -hmm. How important was the ad lib in your journey through hip hop? Uh, me personally, I, I really didn't care too much for the ad lib. <laughs> okay. You know, that's the era we came from. I mean, if you listen to Kane and them, they never really had too much of that. You know, when you, you it was just on lyrics and how you present your voice. Like she was just talking about with finesse. That's that's what it was. Yeah. You know, so you know, and I'm a producer. I'm not really. Oh so, come on, show yeah, you spit, yeah. you spit. Yeah, for for fun. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Like how Pete Rock did it. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like that, but yeah, it wasn't the ad lib thing wasn't too yeah. big of a thing back then. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay, OC. Yeah. How did he come a mm. part of the collective? Well, they went on a, uh, the Source tour. Uh -huh. It was uh, Finesse, Buck Wild, a few of them went on the Source tour, and they connected with OC from that. And then him and Buck came back from the tour, and they made some demos together, and then that's how they came up with his first album. Okay. You know, it was based off of that tour that they went on. They met him because he was on he was on a tour with Organized Confusion. Mm -hmm. But he was because that's where he's from. They camp out there. Okay. Know? Now Diamond D. Yeah. How when did did he grow up with you too or definitely. Okay. Me and Di Diamond and I met each other in McKinley Park doing electric boogie in like eighty two. Uh huh. Something like that. And uh we both knew that we both found out we DJ also. Like I used to be DJing in the park, like the the older guys that was DJing in the park, they used to let me spin, throw me on top of a milk crate because I was like real small. Uh huh. And DJ, so he knew I DJed also. But he was like a year older than me, and he knew a lot more people. And he introduced me to Jazzy J. Uh -huh. Introduced me to Wiz Kid back in the days. I don't wow. know if you remember. Play wow. that beat. Yeah. Play that beat. Yeah, yeah. He took me to Wiz Kid House. That was like going to like. Wow. I was like going to Dr. Dre <laughs> House right now. Like I was like, yo, he had a record on the radio. I was like, yo, this is crazy. Yeah. You know, he was taking me down to downstairs records. All of these places where you buy rare records, Diamond Music Factory on Forty Second Street. Mm. He he took me there. You know, he was introduced me to the names of records and stuff like that. But he was more advanced when it came to rare breaks than I was at that time. Okay, you know? so how, how does showbiz and AG form out of digging in the crystal? Um, through uh, Lord Finesse. Finesse uh -huh. battled him and Clinton. Finesse used to go around every high school and every hood, every projects. When he heard somebody was nice on the mic, he was going to test you uh -huh. to see if he was nice. So he, this guy from my block named Omar, he, he came to Finesse. He lived in the Finesse building and was like, yo, this guy in my school is nice. Uh -huh. He's like, oh, work. And he went, took a trip up there, and they battled, and and you know they both got the you know the eyes and the O's, and then um, when Finesse got his record deal, he haven't heard from him since that battle. When Finesse got his record deal. Uh, someone told him that AG was going with a girl that lived a, a couple of buildings away on our block uh -huh. in Woodstock, and Finesse found him, knocked on the door, and was like, yo, I'm doing an album. You want to get on? And uh, he got on the album, and, and <laughs> he just walked yeah, up. Yeah, he just walked him like you want to get on, and then he introduced him to to everybody and you know the guys around our way or whatever. I mean, he was doing his album. Me, him, Premier, all of us went to Slow Move Studio called Firehouse out uh -huh. in Brooklyn or whatever, and uh, that's where we met. And then uh, finesse had Mike's move, you know, and I already started producing. You know, Premier had Guru, uh -huh. so I, him and I, we just teamed up, and I just started doing demos with him, 
And then we went to try to go get signed. One time we went to profile and he mm-hmm. was like, dead. And I said, yo, I'm gonna press it on myself. Mm-hmm. And then that's how we that's how we got on. We just I just did it myself from there. But I, I met him through finesse. Basically from finesse battling him. That's how I met him. So let me explain the significance of that. Profile, profile records might as well have been Def Jam back then. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> Seriously. Like you was on profile. Run DMC was on profile. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So but what he just told you is the DIY generation that we talk about now. If I try to explain to people, we were doing that too way back then. Way back then. Right. Mm-hmm. Doing it ourselves. Now they got the internet, SoundCloud, uh, YouTube, and other avenues, which we didn't have, yeah. but still managed to do it ourselves. Yeah. Um, uh, let me ask you this. Um, now, while all of this is going on, what's going on in society? What's going on in your neighborhood? What's going on in your environment? Ooh. Well... Well, you well no, paint the picture, not yo. You know, wow. Like, now nah, I'm just yeah, saying, yeah. like, because if you, it's different eras. Like, yeah. if you talking about when we all started realizing we want to do music, mm-hmm. that's one era. But the era when we got on was a totally different era. <laughs> yeah. So you know, in the early days when they was jamming out in the parks, mm-hmm. that's one era where it was. And that's up was, to from like eighty to what? 80. It was like to maybe eighty six. Mm-hmm. Eighty six was like you couldn't jam no more. Cause when you jamming, people dying. That okay. was that was it. Like mm-hmm. from like the seventies all the way to eighty six. Mm-hmm. Somewhere in that area, we felt like ah, right, you can't. Cause you know, crack ever crack came. Was out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Once mm-hmm. crack is out, it's a wrap. You know what I mean? So that's so we talking the early era. It was just all jamming in the parks. You know, going to clubs and doing all that, mm-hmm. dance interior, all of that. But uh, when you talking about when we got on, that was a whole completely different era because that's when the crack had arrived. You uh-huh. know what I mean? And it was just chaos in in a, in, a, in a hood. It was just chaos everywhere. It was a lot of everything. Uh-huh. But we just still focused. Like I, I still focused on the music because you know we all we all was out. We all was in the streets every day. Uh-huh. You know, it was a lot going on at that time. A lot of people dying. We was going to funerals every couple of weeks. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? It was real crazy especially in in my hood you know we had one of the you know worst hoods in the bronx uh-huh. in the south bronx actually but we stood thank god for jazzy J. he had the studio there that we could go to the studio you know to save up our money to do what we do and go to the studio you know he had the only studio in the bronx that was worth going to you know but uh that's what was happening when we was getting on and it was a good time going to J J studio because we, we was seeing q-tip and them up there brand newbie and them mm-hmm. up there everybody was there around that time so tribe called quest brand newbie and everybody yeah. was going everybody to was i met i seen q-tip there like this before he got on yeah and, you know jungle brothers was on back then mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. master ceremony was mm-hmm. it wasn't even brand newbie yet like mm-hmm. when i first went to J studio he had two when i went to his first studio First time I came in there, Master of Ceremony was recording Sexy. That's Brand you know, uh, Poobah. Brand Poobah was, was there. Yeah, Poobah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That's right. So that's and then right. I went to the uh, other studio. Like I said, everybody was in there. Busy B, Melly Mel, everybody. Wow. Like you were seeing generations, you know, like right now, all of the, they all was in Jazzy back then. What, what year was this about? What year was it about? It had to be around 89, 88, 89, 90. Can you... For folks who don't see, we, I, I like doing this, cues mm-hmm. because see, like, we talk about stuff every day. But I like when a you gotta people paint the picture, man. paint the picture, yeah, yeah, right? They got, so you can see yeah. what, it, what it is, right? Jazzy J. Yeah. yeah. Who was he? Why was he important to us? Yeah. Well, Jazzy J. You got is from from Zulu Nation, mm-hmm. and you know they of course they had uh, they were like the first guys who done it. Like uh, of course it was Cool Herc, Dan Bada, Grandmaster Flash, and all them. They were the first generation of people who created this this art called hip hop, this culture rather. Mm-hmm. So Jazzy J had went on to you know be the first the first one out of the hip hop culture to actually have his studio as an artist as as a producer. Mm-hmm. He was really one of the first ones to have one, and he had it in the Bronx. Yeah, it was around the corner from Skate Key. Yeah, yeah, that's the yeah. second one. The first, the first one is around. The first one was on the same block where I have my studio now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the second one he went to was on Allerton by Skate Key. Mm-hmm. But he was from the first generation of the hip hop, you know, uh, originators, and he he created a studio. He made a studio, and then everybody that that was in hip hop back then 
was going to his studio to rock because he was Jazzy J. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And he was part of, you know, Zulu Nation and everything. And uh, that's where we all, that was the goal right there to get to Jazzy J. Like, mm-hmm. we got to get to Jay's studio. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So uh, he played a big role in, in that era of hip hop right there because everything was getting. Joe did his album there. Mm-hmm. I did mine. Diamond did his. Everybody did. They they joined in Jay's studio. You know. Wow. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry, I'm trying to. <coughs> Thank you, bro. I appreciate that. What when when the um business of rap, you know, mm-hmm. when it start becoming more prominent, you know, in the mid '80s, mm-hmm. late '80s, early '90s. What effect do you think the record companies had on the culture? A lot, because, you know, everybody have different agendas. Yeah. You know, like, when you take kids off the street that don't have nothing and they would just, like, want hip-hop as a way out of whatever issues they had in the poverty, or we, we enjoyed it, you know. It was like Iraq back then. The buildings was abandoned, burnt down. Uh-huh. It was bad in the Bronx back then. Uh-huh. So it was like our escape, you know what I'm saying? But the corporation, you know, this is a business. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So while we looking in this direction, they looking in the other direction. Mm. You know, whereas I didn't know nothing about publishing. Mm. I didn't know nothing about these things. You know what I'm saying? Like, we was totally blind to what we was heading into because we was just focused on making music and having fun. And that's what happens every generation. It still goes on to today mm-hmm. to where the kids is focused. That's why the industry is focused on the children because they know the children is not don't understand publishing and 360 deals. They know mm-hmm. the children ain't. They just happy to come from point A to point B. Yeah. Like I mm-hmm. seen Lou Gotti the other day saying that to Joe Bunton. I'm just happy I'm making millions of dollars. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. That's all he worried about. Like uh, two years prior to that, he probably was couldn't even buy himself a pair of sneakers. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's what the corporation, you know, they understand them. And the, building, the, 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 the corporations is built on that. It's built on... It's a predator and prey thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's true. true. There that's it is. So true. Lil Yachty said he had no idea if he was in a 360 yeah. deal. Yeah, he didn't know. I didn't know about publishing. By the time I found out about publishing, I lost hundreds of thousands on the Sound of the Police alone. I learned then, mm-hmm. as and that was in '94. Mm-hmm. Sound of the Police. Yeah, KRS. Yeah, yeah, that's when I learned. I'm. That's when I went to ASCAP, and he was like. I said, word? I yeah. didn't know I had that type of... I didn't know nothing about that. I heard the publishing, but I didn't know how to operate. I, I, I knew about it. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. That's the sound of the police. Yeah. 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 You didn't get paid publishing off of that? No, I got... Of you course. Got I got oh, you got, oh, you got... About, you, know. you know, back, back then, then, and I don't know the laws, okay. if they change or not, but you know if you don't pick up your money in a certain time... Mm-hmm. Finish. Oh. Where does it go? It's it a, goes it, back. Yeah, right. Yeah, they send it back. It's back it to back. them. That's why they don't tell you. Back to who? So they, it, so the basically, yeah, yeah. So basically, <laughs> and they don't. And, and it's very hard, especially at the time when he's speaking. Where, as you mentioned, Sway, there, there's no internet. There's no way to track all of this stuff. So your money is just sitting there, and no one tells you anything. Yeah. Um, and you'll stumble across. You'll hear about after. Like mm-hmm. it's like, what are you talking about after? What is that? You'll hear about ASCAP, and literally, they used to pull drawers open, and there were envelopes, and I mean thousands and thousands of envelopes with different people names on it and they're like hey do you know um sean carter yeah well he has a check here too do you know someone like nobody would say yeah. anything you know and mm-hmm. mind you you have an attorney because you signed that deal but nobody would tell you anything it, he he is 100 yeah. percent yeah. accurate yeah, yeah when, no. when digging in the crates was at his at his apex mm-hmm. what was going on who had albums out what was the what was it what was the world like when everybody was just to uh, too much too much of anything is bad for you talk mm-hmm. about it too mm-hmm. much of anything is, that's why in life I always say it's balance uh-huh. balance is the only thing you should strive for not too much money not too much fame not too much poverty not too much of nothing it's just the right amount of balance because when you're getting too much you start especially too much attention and too much on a go too much of that you start making bad decisions and bad choices because uh-huh. you don't have time to think it out thoroughly yeah you know what I mean 
Yeah, but uh, it was a good time. I would never change anything that we did. I'm well, I would change some of the decisions I made. Uh-huh. But uh, uh, we had albums out. Uh, it was just so dope. We were back to back, and that's what the, you know digging in the craze did. That name the albums. Come on. Oh, uh, Joe represent f- first of Law Finesse came out with the uh, Funky, Funky Technician. Yeah, we came out with Party Group Soul Clap. I'll say Law Finesse too. came back uh, with Return of the Funky Man. You know, we came with Runner and Slave and Diamond came with uh, stunt, Stunts, Blunts, and Hip Hop. Yeah. Then Joe came with Represent. Mm-hmm. Then Miguel came with Lifestyles of Poor and Dangerous. Mm-hmm. You know, then OC came yeah. you know, with the World Life Joint. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was just it was just back to back. Yeah. Back to back for a few years. It was just back to back. But we didn't even really know. Like, we were going on the road so much. Like, it was from one day to another. Like, you know, that's when video mu- music box was mm-hmm. this. Ralph. That was all we had. Yeah. You know Ralph I mean? McDaniels. Yeah, yeah. yeah Ralph yeah. McDaniels. Like, so we go away for three months, going on tour, four months, and come back and things change for us. You know, we were, you know, we couldn't do the things we used to do. Like, people were paying attention. But mm-hmm. We ain't really know. You know what I'm saying? We, yeah. we was on the road moving around. But then we came back. It was just back to back digging, back to back. And I just, I just like, I didn't understand that it was like everybody that was around us made a name for themselves. Yeah. Remember mm-hmm. back in the days, it was Kid Capri was around us, mm-hmm. Drez was around us, Black Premier, Sheep. Premier, Black Sheep, mm-hmm. Premier was around Gang us, Star. Nice and Smooth was around us. Greg I nice. knew Greg Nice and them. Smooth B. Yeah, yeah. Smooth I mean, B. way everybody around us just just out of the blue. We all were in videos and mm-hmm. going on a tour, seeing each other. It was just crazy. It was just a crazy good time. Though. Did it so. break up? Hmm? The DITC? One million percent. What what, what broke it up? Uh, and what year was it, it officially broke well, up? Well, it never was broke up. It's yeah. just that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just keep it 100. Like, keep when you, we all, when you raised in the hood, and, and I hate to say that, that's a, so all the hood yeah, shit. So, yeah. But uh, when you raised without a father. Mm-hmm. Okay. You, and you raised with a, with a, with a mother. Mm-hmm. You start to deal with things in an emotional way instead of logic. Mm-hmm. You understand? Your father bring the logic to the table. Your mother deal with her emotions. So when you have guys that's making business decisions and trying to learn how to be a man and dealing with life and the pressures of being an artist, hmm. that's what breaks everybody up. You know what I mean? It don't be nothing like one incident and all that. You're dealing with emotions mm-hmm. and you're dealing with other people in your ear at the same time trying to like, because they want a part of you too. Yeah. If they, you know what I mean? They they in your ear, and you making bad decisions when it comes to the people that you should value. You start feeling like you don't even have to value the people the way you did before you had this. See, when we all first got in the game, we didn't care about money. We didn't care about nothing. We just wanted to do music. Yeah. But when the money comes in and the labels come in and the people come in, they start getting in your ear and they start playing a role in your decisions and in your mind frame. Uh-huh. So we ain't never really break up. We just had different views on, well, they saying, oh, why you ain't get this from this? Or why you did this? It's just a whole bunch of, and if you're not strong enough and you don't have no father there to tell you how to handle these things right here, yeah, it can cause some type of division in the crew. You well, know what, what year was that, you think, that um, reached that? Um, it that really wasn't of- no one year. It's just mm-hmm. that if everybody's shining, like me, I wanted to just be in the studio and like I, I flew back from a few tours. I, that that's not my thing. Oh, you know okay. what I mean? Like, yeah, show show being here this morning ain't his thing. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know. I'm more just laid back. As long as some in it, long as some in the place where it's around music and stuff like that. So everybody just had different lanes of what they wanted to do and what they didn't want to do. Mm-hmm. You know, Big L's um, murder. How did that affect everybody? And where were you? OC told us where he was. Yeah, well, I was on my way to Atlantic City. Uh, and then I got the call while I was crossing a bridge. And I went down there, and L was just shot. He was When they told me he was when he got shot, I was crossing from the Bronx to Manhattan, and I just made the left. Mm-hmm. And when I went down there, he just was still laying on the floor. Oh, you saw his Yeah, body. I saw him there. I stood there. I, st- I saw him there. Yeah, yeah, he was there. Yeah, you know what I mean. But uh, we were so worried about pun at that time because the year before 
we had went to uh, Miami. We all took a I went took a tour bus to uh, Miami with Fat Joe and everybody and uh, the doctor Pun had you know he had that I don't know what it's called when you could talk and then you just fall out. Uh, Apnea, sleep apnea. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah. So Pun had did that and he had broke his toe, and then and they rushed him to the hospital. And the doctor told him, "Yo, if you're gonna lose weight a year from now, you're gonna die." Like they told Pun that. So that was always in my head. So everybody was worried about Pun. Mm-hmm. So when the L thing happened, that was like so left field. Like yeah. mm-hmm. that was so much of a shock because everybody knew like L was going to be that. We all knew like L is going to be the biggest guy one day. Mm-hmm. Like we all knew that. That was just without, you know, any doubt. But when he got killed, that just took us to, I know myself, I couldn't like, yeah, that just took me somewhere else. Took you somewhere else. Yeah, that just, just took me somewhere else because it was an un- unexpected. Like, and you know, L was funny and all of that, but mm-hmm. you know, we knew L was in the street. Mm-hmm. We knew where L. You know, I knew at least. Yeah. You know, so I was just trying to figure out why. You know, what direction it came from. Mm-hmm. But I never thought it was going to happen to him. I, I, cause so much love he had around his way. Yeah. He had so much love around his way. Like I, I never thought that was going to happen to him. Another mm-hmm. fallen king. Show business here. Kills is here. Molecules. No Legion, man. You know I had to talk. You know, this is. Yeah, no. You got to get the history. You got to get the history. This is important, man. Yeah, we, man. we need to know this. Uh, DITC is back together, stronger than ever. Put out some projects recently. Um, everybody's coming back together like Voltron. It feels good. Uh, I want to talk about this new project, A Bronx Tale, that you and Kills did together. And uh, y'all want to talk with these guys, 888-742-3345. Talk to DJ Wonder. I said, man, these kings are coming in here. Put something mm-hmm. special together for sure because uh, we might not see him this early in the morning again. <laughs> but if we do this right, he might get up and come back and do our Friday Cypher and play beats for us sometime soon. Uh, All right, here it is, man. 888-742-3345. Man, let's open up these phone lines, man. History lessons, though. Sway. History you gotta, lessons. You got to speak on this really quickly because somebody – is sitting home and, 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 and hearing all of this history because they weren't privileged enough to be there, to be at these studios, um, to be at a D&D in the 90s, Oof. to be at a SOBs in the 90s and see these shows, to be at places like The Building, to be in these different spots and see these things happening and in those studio sessions where you might be in the A room and then you go down and you see Premier coming out the B room and he's talking to Showbiz and he's talking to AG and then mm. Guru will walk by. Like, you have to understand what what sway is doing right now for people that's going to watch this too and just this is rare sway it is very mm-hmm. rare and it needs to be appreciated man salute salute um we got i'm gonna go to these phone lines um and then molecules is here too no doubt um before i go to these phone lines when as we talk about ditc mm-hmm. Bless you. Yeah, thank you, man. let me get one of them napkins right there where were you at when all this was taking place, man, I, I was running with Dreads, man. It's so crazy, Dread. Like show said earlier, um, Black Sheep, uh, Brand New Beans, Nice and Smooth, Showbiz. We all was running together. Um, Dreads pulled me in the fold. Um, he want it's crazy. He wanted me to do a solo project from back then, mm-hmm. and I was with a group, and that's you know we did we boys and you know. Uh, we did Jingle, Jingle Jangle. Jangle. Jingle Jangle. But the first thing that we got on was on Show's album. Show was like, he was in Power Play, I think. Mm-hmm. He was like, yo, I want you to do the intro. And then we did the intro to um, uh, Runaway Slave album, right? Yeah. You know, the Legions and the House. Yeah, mm-hmm. the Molecule. So we did the intro. And then, like I said, we just been running. Show been my man from back then. Like, mm-hmm. his son and my son grew up together. Like, mm-hmm. we were friends besides the music stuff like we always been friends uh-huh. and we always hung out together me and show used to be out running around going to clubs and then his record dropped Dres and them record like everybody's record was dropping around the same time so it was just like one big party every day uh-huh. for us and then you know Dres was like yo man I think you at, 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 and it's funny it's like I always felt like show taught me how to do 
Beach show taught me how to work the SB twelve hundred. This is how much I used to be around this guy. You gotta tell when you say the SB twelve hundred. Yeah, yeah. So you gotta tell. Give the yeah, hit. What is man, the SB twelve hundred? Made by do, Emu. Do, do, do. What yeah, is that? SB twelve hundred S nine fifty mm-hmm. Akai show taught me how to do all that. These are all instruments. Instru- from yeah, for, yeah, for San Francisco. Yeah. And, and let it be known, like Premier Pete Rock, Large Professor Q Tip. These these are machines that everybody used back then. Mm-hmm. So. Show, matter of fact, show taught me how to do it, and he was helping me put Jingle Jangle together, mm-hmm. and that was the first song we did when we had signed to um, Mercury Polygram through Dreads and Black Sheep. Yeah, yep. what happened to the Legion? The Legion is still there, man. We still mm-hmm. together. Chucky mm-hmm. Smash, CeeLo the Dice, man. We still together. It's just so crazy. We was working on a Legion album, and um, show show. And Prem, you know, they had headquarters, and then we was giving shows, giving a build. You gotta say what headquarters is. Okay, yeah, but sway my bad. It's, I got it. Yeah, you gotta give them the history. Okay, headquarters used to be D and D Studios. D and D Studios, like Heather said, we be we be in A. Prem will be coming out of B. You in the hallway, you bumping the uh, KRS One or. It was just a hodgepodge. Of, Walt, no, yeah, everybody. yeah. The beat yeah, miners was in there all the time. We it was like one big party of yeah. from that time. You would call us '90s rappers. So it was just one big hodgepodge. Everybody in there shooting pole, going from this room to the next room. So D and D went out of whatever happened. They sold it or went out of business. And Prem picked it up. And headquarters is somebody that used to run with us. He he got right. you know he got killed. And show, I mean, um, Preem named the studio after him. So he had the spot, show had the spot, and show was like, yo, I'm down, you know, we still got it, you know, y'all, whatever you want to work. I was like, bet, let's let's go in there and I'm going to bang out some music because I had, I had stepped away from, like, the group part. Like, I was working with um, this producer, his name is Billy Mann, and he uh-huh. does pop music. So he brought me in the fold with him, and I've been kind of doing, like, pop records, like, uh-huh. I worked with him with Pink, and he had me oh, on with Justin did. Timberlake oh, and stuff just like that. On us? I think no, no, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to explain the the absence because niggas be like, "Yo, what happened to you?" And I was like, "Yo, I was doing other things," and I kind of like disappeared because he had me like in Europe for a couple of years because we was like touring the Justin Timberlake Future Love Sex tour oh, and all these damn. other things. So when I came, I, I'm I'm over there in Copenhagen, and I've run into Craig G. Uh-huh. And I'm like, yo, what are you doing out here? And he was like, yo, I'm doing a show. And he started giving me the game of hip hop. I, I was sound over there. He was like, it's big over here. Yeah. And he was like, yo, what you, what you doing? What's the Legion doing? I was like, well, I'm over here with, with Justin in them right now. Uh-huh. And he was like, yo, you need to get your group and get, he was telling me the people that was out there and what they were doing. So when I came off of that tour, I was like, yo, smash, dice, we need to get back in the lab. And they had headquarters up and running, so we went and started recording. Fast forward. We finished, pretty much finished the album. Right after that, um, Show did a song I, me and him did years ago, like in 95 or something like that, called Revenge. Mm-hmm. And me and him, the song was old. He had put it out on Sony um, in Asia or something like that, but he didn't release it in the States. So somehow, like you said, the internet, somebody got wind of it. And they was like, yo, Molecules and Showbiz got this song called Revenge. And then it kind of started bubbling on the social medias and all that. And I'm like a dinosaur. I'm not really on it. I, I got to get up to speed on it. Mm-hmm. So people would tell me like, yo, that song you and Showbiz did is bubbling. So I went to show. I said, yo, you want to shoot a video? The song is old, but something hot has no date. Premier mm-hmm. told me that years ago. Uh-huh. A hot song, a hot beat has no expiration on it. Uh-huh. It's hot, it's hot. So nobody knew that we did the song over 20 years ago, but when they heard it, they thought we just did it. So we shot the video for it, we put it out, and we sat on it, and we was getting good feedback. Me and him sitting in the studio one night, and was like, yo, how would it be crazy if we just started working on some songs, like, to, like, to follow that up? And we just banged out these songs real quick. and said, let's do a quick little EP, and he would put on a beat, and I would be like, What? I like it. And that's how the, the uh, Bronx Tale got formed. Yeah, that's how it came. I love how you just walked that up. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was dope. Yeah, because the yes. Legion project was supposed to drop first, but <coughs> you know, things happen for a reason, and we here. 
that project, this new album of Bronx Tale is out now. Yes, it is. I saw the uh, the uh, the bad guy video. Yes, bad guy. Okay, and and we got a video with Drez called Hardcore. Hardcore. Drez is on that one too. Yes. yes. Um, I'm gonna take some phone calls. I want to play Bad Guy real quick. This project, I really enjoy listening to it from front to back. Thanks, it's a man. Bronx Tale, and and even the beginning of it. Uh, you got a, a little piece from the actual yeah. movie, right? <laughs> yeah. Which came out in 1993, I believe. Something the, like The that. movie, right, DB? Uh-huh. Right, DB? He's our movie junkie. I just want to... Co- correct. Yeah. I'm correct. <laughs> uh, with uh, Cologino. Okay. And then yeah. and then the Legion was formed when? With- we, we came out... Um, our album, Jingle Jangle, dropped in 93, the end of 93. You see the ties right mm. there? You see what that... You see that parallel? I read yeah. that, but you see that parallel? <laughs> <laughs> you see that parallel? We're going to play. This is brand new music, uh, Molecules and Showbiz. The album is called A Bronx Tale. It's out now. You can get it anywhere. Yes, pretty much. All right. What is your social media, Molecules? Um, underscore the Legion, underscore, and then it's uh, Molecules BX Twitter. I mean, the the the, yeah, the, the underscore Legion underscores on Instagram. Mo- Molecules BX is Twitter and Molecule no the Legion BX Facebook. Okay, did Justin Timberlake know your your history? Yo, the funny thing about it, what he wait, what he up, did up. know. Um, wait, so hold up, so we live on the air show. Can you stop that thing? <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. <laughs> All right, go um, ahead. Uh, what he what he knew of me, uh, Billy introduced him to me. Billy, Billy man, he he worked on big records, and. Um, he was explaining to him at the time I was working with Most Def. I did um, a song on Most Def album called Life Is Real. I mm-hmm. did the beat, and then he, uh, he was explaining to Justin that I did that beat, and Justin happened to know about Most Def or whatever. So he was like, "Wow!" So yeah, Justin's up on it, man. Yeah, he's like up on kid, it. I was man. shocked. He's a nah, guy. I like that dude guy, fit, man. And he's hip. You would think he only knows. Nah. You know, bye 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 and all that. Like he knows, he knows hip hop. He knows hip hop. He knows hip hop. All right, we're gonna open up these phone lines. This is a bad. Uh, this is bad guy uh, featuring Money Ray. Eight 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 seven four two three three four five. Way in the morning. Bad guy. Molecules from the Legion. Showbiz. D I T C. Legion came up to the Wake Up Show back in 91, 92. Somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah, ni- yeah somewhere in the 90s. Yeah. yeah. We had um, what we called the Woodstock of Hip Hop. That was crazy. Around the Gavin Report, which was a trade magazine that Brian Talk Sampson, who came up here not too long ago, was running the, the rap column, yeah. him and Kelly yeah. Wu. Kelly Wu was the same Kelly Wu Rizzo shouts out, Kelly Wu from the Gavin. Hmm. Um, and... <laughs> You was telling, go ahead. Yeah, you, 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 he, yo, Sway and Tech, they had it. I, somebody told me it was 24 hours, and I would have believed it because it went on for hours. Yeah. And we walked in there. It was like us. It was boot camp click. It was uh, uh, Jaheem, no, Shaheem Rugged Child. Mm-hmm. It was mad rappers. I, I saw meth. It was just like, and it was like a revolving door. Like mm-hmm. as we walked in, we spit. The next set come in, walk in, spit. The next set, it was crazy. I never seen nothing like that before in my life. And I talked about that. I came back to the Bronx. I was like, yo, I just came from Cali. I was part of like a 24 hour cipher. Like I've never seen nothing like that. Kills wow. the hookers and you not. You ain't never <laughs> gonna see that again. Cause that's why you be looking at hey, people yo. sometimes like, how you don't want to spit? What you mean you ain't rapping today? Yeah, like that. How? Oh. That stuck in my head forever. I was like, yo, Sway and Tech Show. I never did anything like that in Legendary. my life. Legendary. Crazy. Yeah, I'm glad you had that moment. Yeah, I got to live that. <laughs> I, I could say I, li- I lived it. I was there. Uh, I think then y'all. I think we put you on the volume on the Wake Up Show freestyle volume. Maybe, man. Yeah. You might have, but yeah. you that that no right there. No publishing on that though. No publishing. <laughs> <laughs> Showbiz trying to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a little bit of a pivot, but I'm just so damn curious because today we were talking about um, Drake and Tory Lanez just patching back together. Um, you know their camaraderie for the sake of the six for Toronto, yeah. and we always have conversations about the evolution of rap beefs. Mm-hmm. So for both of y'all, what would be your top three rap beefs of all time, and why? Definitely one of the big rap beefs that I mean that didn't go nowhere, but lyrically was Jay and Nas. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, that was that was yeah that, that, that was, was beautiful. Incredible. That, it was incredible. That was beautiful. Yeah, that Jay, was Jay and Nas from and for me it was definitely definitely for me is KRS and Shane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, it, man. Yeah. Yo, that yeah. the Bronx. We was so happy when <laughs> KRS did that, man. He's we the, like he's a hero <laughs> for us for like. Yeah. Oh man, yeah, we used to go. Hero, we used man. to go to Latin quarters, and they used to play that record, man. And Brooklyn yeah. niggas used to go crazy. Yeah, th- this stuff now, I don't, I don't consider. You got it. Ice Cube yeah. and uh, N.W.A. was a good one on the way. Yeah, but we didn't like that beef because they was down with each other. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was that was bad. <laughs> that was yeah. like, come yeah. on, man. That was dope. Y'all was yeah. down yeah. with yeah. each yeah. other. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We don't like the the inner the beef with each other, yeah. like crews that break. I don't com, like that. Common, yeah. common and ice cube. Common and ice cube. That was yeah. That was a one off. That was terrible. Common. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was. <laughs> that was, that was, but that was what, were, <laughs> what were you about to go into, Biz? When you were saying uh, how um, you were about to speak about the beasts of today, you can't really relate to them. They not because they not. Look at this, Remy and Nikki. That that ain't like. That wasn't like KRS and Shan. I wasn't like. Jay and Nas, that was, that was just something else. You know, they got into the publishing and they took her song off. Yeah, like, that was wild. what's that? <laughs> Where they do that at? That's like, like you cheating. You like, okay, we got the get out of here. You, you know, yeah, that was unfair. That's what I'm saying. Like, they kept you can't playing, even let them rock. They kept playing Nicki's yeah, song. Like, but this they is crazy. Dead, they like, dead it, um, nah, man, Remy's song. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, it ain't the same no more. Publishing. You know wow. Oh. Um. We got um, AK from the Bro- uh, Brooklyn on the line. What up, AK? AK, what's up? What's good? What's good? What's up? the beach. Stacey G, uh, Sway. What up? DB, what's happening? Hey, man. How you doing? <laughs> All right. I just want to salute the brother, uh, the brother Showbiz from, from the Bronx, man. You know, I know the brother is a, you know, a legend on the music side, but also in the streets as well. And, you know, I, I spent some time with him up here in the Bronx at Forest Projects. My name is I from Brooklyn. We was part. We was one of the guards that used to come to the Bronx and, uh, and build with the brothers uh, in, in, in Forest Projects. Ah, uh, these are the guards, all right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah we, and I just mm-hmm. want to say, show you know, keep doing what you're doing and hold your head, man. Mm-hmm. And Molecules, you're definitely in the mix as well, you know, because they they had a good album as well. You know, that Legion album was something serious too. So good luck, I just want to salute the brothers up there for doing what they're doing and keep moving, you know, an army. You know what I mean? Yo, yeah, when we do it. when we do the DITC um, documentary, we we're just talking music side today, but we'll we'll get in the, the street side ain't for the radio. But <laughs> <laughs> that's that's for the documentary, all right. But be be on the lookout for that, man. Thanks for your call, I... No doubt, peace. All right, peace. 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 Spider, what up? Spider, what's poppin'? Hey, what's up? Um, how y'all doing, morning show? Um, I just want to say what's up to show. I used to, I I live in the Bronx. I grew up in the South Bronx in that era, and I don't know if you remember me, but. I used to have the black Z twin turbo, and um, I like my pockets fat, not flat. You had to let me be in the video that day. We had to go to 125th and get all our army gear and stuff. Who, you know, what I'm saying? it's good to see you, Spider. What's up, Spider? What's going I be, on? I used to be, I used to be with Jason and them. Yeah, I know. You know what I'm saying from. Yeah, I'm just yeah. saying, what's up? It's good that you doing music again. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying yeah. I'm a road warrior now. Okay. Um, it's all good right. to hear your voice. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying. Yeah, Spider, I, I remember you, hurt. man. That's what's up, man. Yeah, How you been? Up. You good? I'm good. I'm good. Um, you remember the time we went to Queens and I got in an accident in the car? You was no, in the car with me. No wasn't doubt. You? <laughs> 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 moment. Yeah, 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 Spider, yeah, yeah. Spider, you a citizen. Man. That's right. I'm uh, on it with yeah. the official so, memory. Um, right. just say, just say. Um, I give a shout to Wally World of them. I heard a couple months when I was into the radio that they're doing plays and stuff now. That's yeah. good. That the black man is creating new things and yeah. doing new things and elevating. I just want to say uh, love to everybody in the morning. I listen every morning. Thank y'all you. keep me from uh, 8 to 12. That's I, I appreciate y'all. Keep doing what y'all doing. I know y'all got other things to do. Yo, You're a right. citizen, hey, baby. We right. appreciate That's you. What Craig, you what you want to say real quick, Craig, up, Craig? Go ahead, Craig. What, what, what's good, showbiz? I just want to salute your morning show. It's good to hear you back on the radio. I used to go to school with your boy, A.G. We used to go to Clinton together. All right. And Lord for Nuff actually performed at my record release party, the last party they did at the Castle. All right, all right. That's what's up. That Daddy J studio with the elephant beard. BX always stands up. I'm proud of y'all, man. Craig, Craig, you a citizen, man. This way in the morning. Uh Joe in Denver, what up? Joe, what's up? What's good, Joe? What's good? Go ahead, man. You got these legends in here. Speak to them. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, I'm from the Bronx. I'm from Fox Street between uh, Leggett and Avenue St. John. I grew up on your stuff. 
Um, I used to see Fat Joe kicking it on the block. I ain't going to say what he was doing, but that's neither here nor there. But I just <laughs> wanted to say that's what's up. Um, I, I love the way y'all rep the Bronx. I'm the Bronx all the way from my feet to the top of my head. And to hear y'all on the radio makes me feel good. You know what I'm saying? Good looking sway. Right. That's what's and up. And one love. One Please. love. No yeah, doubt. I'm going to say this to everybody, including you, Joe. Don't just hear them on the radio. Pick up the album, A Bronx Tale. It's out now. Molecules is showbiz. Um, and you're going to hear more music from them. Uh, I'm going to have to have them come back up. And when we do the cypher, um, see who got them bars, uh, Cues. No and, uh, you no know, okay. <laughs> and so what we'll do, we'll do a special cypher. Let showbiz bring the beats. No and doubt. then we'll get one other, one or two other MCs. And okay. then we'll do a whole cypher. That'll work. Are you ready for that? I'm ready. I already yeah, know, man. <laughs> um, man, thank you. All right. For thank real. you for coming up. Man, thanks for having us, man. Man, I appreciate you, man. This is for me. This is this what keeps me going, man. We yeah, was at the Billboard that. Music Awards this weekend, suited and booted, <laughs> talking to the biggest pop artists in the world. Today I had to come home and get my balance. <laughs> All right? Uh, Showbiz, nice. how can they reach you, man? If you want to uh, d- 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 connect with them on social media. Social media, DITC Studios. Mm-hmm. And on Twitter is DITC ENT Entertainment. Uh, Facebook is DITC ENT Entertainment. Okay. And you then I mean? Q's, one more time. I know you have problems the first round. Yeah, man. You know, I'm new to this. Y'all got to excuse me, man. <laughs> uh, underscore the Legion underscore on Instagram. Molecules BX Twitter. The Legion BX Facebook. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. I'm going to play. Right. I'm going to end the show uh, with a song from the album called Methadone Rap. Uh, featuring the Legion uh, This yeah. is my joint too The beats on this album Are ridiculous Yeah show uh, killed did the it show. You did your thing brother Thank you um, And um, I know you got A collective of young producers You working yeah. with And you mentoring yeah. right now yeah. If you want studio time You want to do it In the birthplace of hip hop You want to go to the Bronx And have it for real Have that real experience I go out there When I go to show studio Man that Man, I can't leave, man. Show might be cooking something up on the stove top. <laughs> Last time, man, he, we, he made the chicken. The chicken yeah, had to be yeah. perfect, man. You know, yeah. you know, I sat there and ate, got fat, almost fell asleep on the couch. You yeah, know, but, man. man, it's a great environment up there. It's that realness that you want to have. You know, I wish guys like Lil Yachty and some of these younger, younger artists mm-hmm. could come experience your yeah. studio energy. Yeah. And, um, and man, I'm going to suggest they go there when yeah. they come here, all right? Yeah. All yeah. right, yeah. cool. Well, Tracy, how can they reach you? Twitter, Instagram, at it's Tracy G I T S T R A C Y G. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, citizens. It's called The Happy Hour with Heather B. Sway mentioned food for food recipes and drink recipes. I'm at Real Sway across the board. Today we're going to have our Friday cipher. Uh, uh, it's already up with uh, with Sean Smith story mm-hmm. and and then today also Modest Yahoo came up Friday. Modest Yahoo. Uh, a, Hasid- a Hasidic Jew, Jewish mm-hmm. artist. Mm-hmm. Remember Modest Yahoo from back in the day? I yeah, remember. Right, okay, cool. Well, man, this is interesting. We put up his interview today. He talks about Judaism and, and hip hop, mm-hmm. you know, dating black women, you know, all sorts of breaking down a whole lot of different <laughs> stuff. That'll be up on SwaysUniverse.com today. Make sure you check it out. Um, we're going to end with Methadone Rap. And until tomorrow, we have nothing left to say. It's Sway in the morning. Only on Shade 45.